Hi everyone, so I am here today with Becca Stowen, who is um, part of my Authentic Tech Leaders Mentorship Program, and she's been on that for the first cohort of that. Now, um, I'm really excited to have Becca here because she's here to talk about the value of finding a supportive community. And that's one of the things that she came along to me with when we first started talking. And so it was this conversation with her that really pushed me to kind of go, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set up this community and I'm going to set up my mentorship program. So the fact that she has been through that and has found value that is that is really amazing um, and fantastic and something that I really thought would, would be valuable to share. But first, I wanted to really give Becca the chance to talk about her story and tell us where she comes from, because that's quite exciting, too, and quite different. And um, let's see where we go with it. So so welcome, Becca. Um, Thank you. So it's really exciting to have you here. <laughs> I'm super excited. This is just a great opportunity. So thank you so much. Um, so let's start with you. So so let's tell us a bit about you. Um, what you do? How did you get into tech? And, and let's start from there. OK, sure. Um, so how I got into tech, I think it's easier to start from the very beginning. So I, I, um, I grew up in a very mechanically inclined family in the States. Um, my parents were both race car drivers. My grandfather was the first IT guy in a newspaper automation, if you can imagine, back in the day. Um, and I just always naturally had an affinity for things that were technical um, from when I was young. So I would get out and help my dad work on his car. And, and um, thankfully, he always you know, happily showed me how to do stuff. So um, I tried out a lot of different majors in school and nothing really stuck. Um, I ended up working a lot of odd jobs. Um, and the last really odd job I had was a call center. And from working in the call center as a normal phone tech, I, I graduated up to um, working on AS400 uh, mainframe systems. So <laughs> it was quite a jump. It was literally me sitting, you know, keying in orders and talking to people on the phone. Um, and when the computer systems, the daisy chain of green screens would go down, and I would call the IT guy and he would never show up. And yes, you and, became the IT guy. <laughs> yeah. And so I just kind of like, well, I think I can fix this. And do do. And so I would I would fix it and kind of got the reputation for, hey, wait a minute, she's always fixing stuff before our guy gets there. What's going on? So I was actually invited to join the team for AS four hundred operations and it was it was <laughs> It was the beginning of me saying yes to tech. So I was the first female on that team. And this was in the late 90s. And I jumped into the corporate office of that same um, company. And they relocated me to Hollywood, California. So wow. that was super cool. <laughs> and, um, worked at the corporate office and took care of the art department, which at the time were the people that did catalog layout and um, you know set up the runway shows it was a fashion uh, catalog type of thing and so I ended up getting Apple certified um, and about six months after I was certified um, I got a call from Apple and they recruited me <laughs> so so, so I, and what I'm hearing here is these kind of, well, there's a problem and I could see how to fix it. So I jumped in and fixed it. And then this new thing just emerged that took me to that next step. And yeah, and, yeah I'm working for Apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, I, and then there I was working for Apple. Now, this is pre-iPhone, like way pre-iPhone. Um, I think I started there in 2004. I came in as what they call a genius. If, if anyone's been to Apple stores, you mm -hmm. can go in for tech support and whatnot. And so I went through the, I mean, it's a phenomenal training program. I was quickly pushed to lead genius. So I had started with like five, I think four or five people on my team, um, men, guys mm -hmm. on my team, I should say. It really does make a difference. <laughs> and, um, and by the time I, I left that position, there were 40 on my team. So it had exponentially um, grew over a period of about three years. And then I was invited to be an apprentice with the uh, IS&T retail systems for Apple. So I got to travel to like over 30 different store 
uh, doing remodels and doing grand reopenings um, to some of the big flagship stores, um, the first store in Switzerland, you know, the, the giant store on, in Boston, um, and so many other stores in between where we would gut them and, and reconfig them and completely um, get them up and running in two weeks. So I got a lot of project management experience with that as well. So tech really ran through um, my life. It was my life, big time. And, um, and I really didn't see myself being anywhere but Apple. And, but, and, and what's amazing, because that's kind of, it's, that's not the bit of you that we know. In, <laughs> that I I know. know. It's like <laughs> this person who's kind of jet setting around the world, opening Apple stores and kind of working with Hollywood stars and stuff like that. And that's, yeah, absolutely amazing. It was, and it, it, in times it feels like a completely other life. Um, yeah. But, but it is such a core part of, of um, what brought me to this point. So it was, yeah. it's really good. Um, but yeah, then um, 2011, I broke my leg like you, severely <laughs> broke my leg and couldn't walk for about a year. Went through a couple surgeries and that completely changed my life. It was mm -hmm night and day um i could hold, have, have a whole other call just about the experience of going through that but having that shift my life um i definitely couldn't work i couldn't stand i couldn't do my job with apple i couldn't travel and i got passed over for permanent positions on the team that i really wanted to be on and it was a big wake up for me i decided to quit apple and because I would not have been able to return in the same place mm -hmm. that I was. Um, I decided to go back to school. Um, so um, I went back to school, not for tech. I went for my passion, which is music. And I studied ethnomusicology at a small woman's college in the middle of the country. And um, did that for about a year and a half and then just couldn't pay for it anymore. <laughs> so that's when it was more about ethnomusicology, travel, dip, you know, visiting different cultures. I'm really excited and passionate about that. I truly, at that point, I had left tech behind. And I went straight from the US down to Peru and, <laughs> uh, and Stayed almost a year in Peru. Um, learned uh, the learned how to teach English, and um, I learned a lot about the quality of being a good teacher. Um, I found that I applied myself into teaching just as much as I applied myself into tech, and um, I just geeked out on it and wound up. I, I think I, we went from Peru to Ecuador and Colombia and chilled out in Bogota for a while. And um, I did an online bachelor's degree. I finally got my, <laughs> my university credentials in the super backwards way. But I was very proud because I was the first person and in my family to get that. In, what, what was your degree in in the end? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's specifically in um, teaching English as a foreign language. Yeah. Yeah. So going all over the place and <laughs> trying yeah. everything and, 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 and showing that it doesn't matter that much, really, exactly. but, it, but you got there. So. Yeah, so <laughs> from there, <laughs> from there I jumped over to Asia. And um, the reason being that uh, there's a lot of teaching opportunities in, in China. I did that for about six months and could not do it anymore. It was mm -hmm. not a culture that I was prepared for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was uh, not only in the, the beautiful people are beautiful there, but the way of life was a little too um, fast paced for me. I didn't ever plan to go back to the US and I haven't since 2014. Wow. Oh, so, yeah, found uh, found my home through um, my mentor through the teaching certification program that I, I first did before my degree. He actually was a mentor during my degree as well. But I said, hey, I'm looking for a small town with amazing people, with, with you know, ancient beauty, um, nature. Where in the world is this? 
and uh, and he said, Siem Reap, Cambodia. You have to go. It is the best place on earth. <laughs> and what an amazing question to be able to say, well, if I could settle anywhere in the world, where would it be? <laughs> it was right. And it, it was so exciting. Um, and at the same time, being realistic, I had about $300 left in the bank. So <laughs> you know, it was one of those, oh, here I am, you know, it's time. Let's do this. I'm, I'm ready for another uh, teaching position. And I, I'm looking for that place. So um, just jumped from Bali to Siem Reap and had a job within five days. Yeah, I just felt so nurtured there. And the people that I met were like family immediately. You know, everyone in Cambodia, it's rare that you'll hear someone use someone else's first name. Culturally, they, they use uh, sister or brother auntie, uncle, these kinds of things. But um, in general, if you're about the same age, you're your sister brother, no matter what. Um, and it's very endearing. So it was a, a super welcoming and um, jumped in as a kindergarten teacher. And um, yeah, loved it. It was very challenging because the school didn't have much tech at all. And so it was old school kindergarten at first and um, I started to introduce some of the technical things into the classroom um, but very very slowly because I didn't have much tech myself mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's kind of how I got into tech and how I then got out of tech <laughs> and, <laughs> and then got into tech. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so about about three years at that school in Siem Reap. And then, of course, COVID-19 came. And it was a very difficult time for everybody, absolutely. And I felt that it was time that, that I shift. And um, there were many reasons, not, not just that I was ready for um, pulling tech back into my life, mm -hmm. but, but it, was the, it was the push that I needed to, to realize that, that, yeah, this is right for me. Um, yeah. So I accepted a position in basically uh, directing the technology of a very elite uh, private school in Phnom Penh, which is the capital city of Cambodia. It's a big, big, big city, super different from Siem Reap. And I moved here in May, I think, mm -hmm. of this uh, 2020. So right in the middle of everything um, from the COVID point of view. And um, yeah, jumped right in in June. And I think that's right and about right so <laughs> <Really happy. laughs> The experience that I've had is that it, of what you've been going through is that it's been pretty intense. It's been pretty, yeah, full on. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and, and I think that's that's something that ends up being a theme is the that idea of intense. Um, when it's me for me, it's just my life. But it's interesting when I do tell it. Uh, I think a lot of folks are like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. So you've talked quite a bit about the different cultures that you've, so many different cultures that you've experienced. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if you wanted to talk about um, any sort of specific examples of, of cultures you've you've kind of fitted into or had to fit into while you've been working in the various kind of situations and traveling in so many different situations. Yeah. Um... You know, I think culture, it's important to define culture in a more broad sense because it, it can be our immediate thought, especially me talking about international travel, is um, cultures of basically the home culture of a group of, of people from an area. But culture is everything. You know, as mm -hmm. we know, when, when we work for large companies, especially tech companies, culture is extremely important. The idea of corporate culture, um, the idea of, of even just city culture. Um, so I think from a cultural point of view, the first real, I would say, culture shock was being the only female um, in tech. I, I never really thought about it until I was the only one. And yeah. in the men that I worked with, 
they're nice. They're always very nice, but there's something there and it starts with them. Um, a feeling and I think that's what started I started to develop a, a very acute sense of empathy um, as well as kind of a, a sensitivity to what people thought about me because when they said oh what do you do which is a very common American question especially and um, what do you do for a living kind of thing and I would say oh I'm, I'm he has 400 operations or I'm work at Apple or I whatever oh and that <laughs> Like, there's no way she does this, you know? Um, and there's, it's such a loaded response. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, us as a, like as a receiver of their response, I'm not sure where to take that. And so mm -hmm. I had to really develop a bit of a thick skin um, to, that's a very nice way of saying it. I think most people, most um, most of the guys I would work with, it, it, at first it was walking on eggshells. Um, I would just be me. I would come in as me, and they would tiptoe around me, and I could feel it. <laughs> and so I had to become one of them mm -hmm. in order to get through that culture. Um, <clears throat> I would say, especially when I was working as a tech um you know, at, at, uh, at Apple, um, we did a lot of repairs in the repair shop and it was, it was definitely, it was, uh, you know, not in front of the customers kind of thing. And so, um, it was a lot more of a relaxed atmosphere. And, um, so I had to really be careful about who I was in mm -hmm. those situations. Um, and yeah, I learned really quick to guard myself. Um, but at the same time, become one of them, um, and then I'm certainly I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit that at all, um, because through doing that, uh, through relating to the guys, I understood why it's so weird to have girls in tech, and I think it's a perspective that um, that I, I continue to hold dearly because it was never animosity, it was never how dare she take a position from a guy? It was nothing bad. It just mm -hmm. was a misunderstanding. It was a total miscommunication. They just, it was just different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it was something that when I would meet another female in tech, it was, uh, it was always the, oh man, yeah, you're the only one too, right? <laughs> And we finally like two unicorns. We finally found each other, you know, and uh, and we would talk about it openly. And so that was and the first one. On that, but how how does it feel to be in that place and and trying to fit in and trying to and and what you've described is is doing it to make others feel more comfortable as well. It's not just about you being more comfortable. It's helping them. Yes, that that's really the key, and is that. It wasn't about making me feel comfortable. It was about making them feel okay with me. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I was very uncomfortable. I, I would make sure that, um, that everybody else was okay before I was, um, that I would, you know, I would hold back stuff that might seem emotional or might seem too female -y or whatever mm -hmm. people wanted to say, a little too, um, you know, yeah, weak. That always comes up, that word, unfortunately. But at the same time, there was this antithesis because when you would, when I would meet people who were fascinated by, by what I was doing, um, men or women, they, it would, it would be a, wow, that is so cool. What do you do? My goodness. It's so cool. Um, how do you do it? It is usually the, the next phrase yeah. that came out. And it was like, I couldn't explain how it was a big coping mechanism at the time. But again, at the same time, I was, I was having a blast being one of the guys. It just yeah. wasn't really who I was. And yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it's like it's part of who you are and there is a part of you that's drawn to that but there's another element that just doesn't get shown so much that that's, definitely yeah and, uh, and it was it was fortunate because i grew up with a lot of guys you know as a young girl i, I was the, the youngest the only girl um i grew up around a lot of very big tall strong dudes who mm -hmm. would fight a lot and there was a lot of anger in my family <laughs> so I, I was raised to be tough and yeah. so I would find myself really toughening up and and holding that toughness and even to this day the fighter will come mm -hmm. out very easily if I'm stressed if my state of mind is not in the right place it's a fight reaction. It's not a flight. Um, yeah. And I know that about myself enough now that I watch for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so in when you're, you're in this position, you're feeling like you're, you're not, you can't be yourself because you, you don't want to make other people uncomfortable. But right. also, there isn't, but there's an element of there, like you say, when you're kind of feeling stressed, who do you turn to? Who's, who's in your support network? Yeah, because yeah, the the biggest thing is that it, uh, I end up being more exhausted um, on a daily basis than I should because, mm -hmm. in, in, in you know, had to stop and realize why I'm being why am I dragging myself home every day? Why am I so worn out? What is going on? It's not like it's not like I'm running up and down stairs twenty four times a day. I'm just I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I would, I would, I would find myself being a lot more irritable, um, small things would set me off and all of those things. And a lot of it stemmed from me not being who I really am and mm -hmm. who I want to be is not what everyone expects me to be in the in the in that position and um, especially in a leadership position as i started to progress it was you are you know you're you're technically supposed to act this way you're an it professional now and you know this kind of thing there was an um, an element of having to hide who i am um my softness i i, I was not comfortable showing that and um and so having to to come to terms with kind of who I really am and, um, and getting to know the real me. And then I started to see people that were available <laughs> because before it would just be hide everything about me. Don't show anyone who I really am. Don't wear makeup. Don't, don't feel good about myself. Make sure that, um, Everyone else is taken care of before you are. These were kind of the rules in my head for survival. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I knew that they weren't the right rules. But once mm -hmm. I was able to say, okay, this is because I'm masking myself. And if I let my guard down a little bit, just a little bit, what could possibly happen? And um, thankfully, I was able to, you know, in my current job, I have the, the coolest boss in the world. She's she it's the first time i've had a female uh yeah. in, a, in a leadership position above me um someone who is definitely not techie she's she's not at all but she gets it she knows the hard work that goes into running a school for example um she's willing to support me she values everything i bring to the to the to the table and um yeah i just feel very comfortable going to her um at the same time she's she's got this uh, tough as nails but i really care about every single person on this team kind of attitude so it's 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 refreshing to to have yeah. that um so i i'm just that's only in the last six months or so so um just getting used to being able to go to her with um, with any kind of vulnerability, uh, which is cool. Yeah, really, really cool um, and very unusual. Um, before that, before her, if you know, my moon cycle was horrendous one month. I I couldn't go in and and say anything to my team or my boss or anyone because then I'm weak. I'm yeah. weak 
girl and all of those things that come along with that. And um, whether that's true or not, it's the position that I, I felt myself in. Mm-hmm. And I would tough my way through everything. And yeah, I hope so, I answered the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, it's that seeing, and what I've really taken for what you said there is that by starting to see that you didn't need to um, be that tough person, it's when you started letting that go and you started to see some support appearing. So while you thought there was no support there and you had to prove yourself to everyone, there was no support there because you just couldn't see it. And then starting to let your guard down a little bit allowed some people in. And this this boss has turned up in your life who sounds like a great role model to have. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and is there showing you that you can be tough, but you can also be vulnerable as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you came to me, I think it was like, it must have been May, June, it was just before, just as you were starting, um, mm-hmm. for um, talking about coaching and some support. So what yeah. was you were looking for then? What was it that you thought that, that might help there? So the, the idea came to mind of, um, of finding a coach because being in Cambodia, I, I really am one of the very, very few females um in tech um only about eight percent of of women cambodian women pursue tech and Mm -hmm. um, the the culture here is such that when when it's time to be married and have children career is gone and and that's what normally happens and they love that they love it and they embrace it Um, but that's why there's not a lot of women in in that career <clears throat> so there are some expatriate women here, but um, <clears throat> I think most of the time they're here to promote more of the STEM um, mm-hmm. side of things and not so much management, leadership, um, support systems, um, which is what my specialty is. <clears throat> so I think um, when when I thought about coming back into this field and knowing that I would probably have a team, um, I didn't know how many yet and this kind of thing. Yeah, I just, I had this, I need somebody on my side that I can explain things to. I don't need a therapist. I think I'm okay mentally, but <laughs> I really need someone who- need a bit of support. <laughs> yeah, who I don't have to totally explain myself to. Um, and who who may not have to see all of the emotional stuff that I will go through on my own. Like I can take care of myself emotionally, but I need that other per- person to be um, ready to offer me um, a different reflection in the mirror mm-hmm. when I needed it, mm-hmm. you know. But it was really like, I need someone who, who gets the tech part of it 100%, but also gets the leadership part of it 100%, and also is not, trying to um, focus me on one specific style of being a strong leader or the typical ones that I would I would find out there just fit me um, and I would just kind of nah I'm not gonna do that (laughs) it's and and it's that hearing all your journey as well it's kind of knowing that you've got to the place where you know you want to be you and so yeah. it's not about getting out there and proving yourself. It's about being you and doing the best you can. And and that's, yeah, that's what I love. It's that kind of, how do I help you be more you? And yeah. just and be successful at being you and have that impact on the world. And that's, yeah, that's lovely. I think that, was, that was so nice because you, you immediately um, kind of, you, you kind of asked the right questions to, to find out who I really am um instead of what i do and that was really refreshing and, and it just kind of worked from there it was like yeah this is this is going to be a partnership that, that is supportive of my needs specifically where i am at this time thing I, I just knew i needed um a bit of a partner in this thing and um and i didn't just get one partner i'm really <laughs> excited about um, that. That's what, so so from that that nudged me as I said at the beginning to, to kick off a mentorship program I yeah you. I think you were like hey I'm really thinking about doing this situation with mentorship where you know a bunch of us would get together and I was like yes that would be 
I so, would have to do it. <laughs> so how has the mentorship program delivered on that? So how has that helped you kind of show up more as who you are and have that kind of mm. background support as well? So what, what have you got from the mentorship program? Yeah, I mean, what was what was really together and I mean, what was so cool about when, when we first met each other on the call, on our first call, was learning that, you know, I wasn't the only one from outside of England. I was a little concerned about that at first. <laughs> Like, oh, everybody's going to be from England, and <laughs> I am way over here. But indeed, we had a really fine mix of, um, of culture, of age. It was, it was beautiful, of, of background, of field. Um, gosh, every single one of us is from a different tech field um, and came to it with this sisterhood of yeah, this is the way things are. And, oh, you've experienced that too? Yep, me too. Okay, cool. We don't even have to mention that. We just can support each other going forward. It's, it's, like, um, it's like when you, when you go to um, an art festival and you think, I am the only person here that is searching for that, that sculptor. I, I'm hoping that someone here is a sculptor because I really love sculpture and you just see a bunch of paintings on the wall. It's still beautiful and everything's wonderful, but you're looking for that sculpture because it's really what you love. The mentorship group was like all of us brought together exactly what we needed from each other. We already, mm -hmm. we were like magically there to give it to each other um, when we needed to. So, um, and that, that was from small aspects of just, hey, how are things going? How are things progressing? All the way to, um, you know, feeling free to post in our private group things that I would never put out on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that everybody brought was invaluable. I mean, you can't, you can't go into a, a, a Facebook group and start asking for people who know exactly what you're getting into. Um, and I think that's that was the value of, of you being able to kind of chit chat with all of us on the side and then bring us all in together because mm -hmm. it really, really is exactly what we needed. It, it wasn't just, hey, I'm doing this leadership program, X, Y, Z, tick the boxes and you're done, you finished. It, it's not about that at all. It's, it's about developing a system of support that um, yeah, that continues. So it's really and, and again, what I'm hearing, the, the thing that I'm thinking through is that there's part of it is because you're going out there and you're sharing your mission, sharing what it is. That's part of the training is understanding your mission, but sharing it with everyone else. By doing that, you get to know the other people and see where they're going. And then the group calls, you get to know them a bit. And then that just opens it up so you can think, oh, okay, this person is going. They, they do know a bit about what I'm going through. And so that starts to bring the community together. So, yeah. so, so how has it affected how you show up at work? There's always a swing of urgency in education. Um, and it's a, that swing of urgency I've always uh, tended to work within uh, in, my, in my tech roles as well, especially, you know, things like with Apple, with project management, with um, even with AS400, there were times where you just have to stay for 24 hours to fix something on these giant mainframe computers. You just have to go with the flow and you sacrifice through those times of urgency. And, um, and yet I was quickly able to, to take um, a lesson where we talked about um, the quadrants. I had, I had remembered that from the way, way back, but I'd never really applied it. And I started applying that at work um, right yeah. after we did that. Do you remember what it's called, Emma? The Eisenhower you know, where... matrix, is it? Urgency? I and think so. Yep, urgency yeah. and importance. And, um, and I just thought, well, that's something that I can show my team, that I can teach them, because they probably have never heard of this. Um, so let me, let me bring it to our team and see what happens. And it was amazing, <laughs> completely amazing, because it changed how we communicate um, about our current projects. And it also allowed it, anytime someone came in where it was like, oh my God, the computer's not working. Oh my God, the projector won't turn on and the world is going to explode, you know? <laughs> anytime someone came to me with that energy, I feel it, I'm, I'm an yeah. empath. 
I'm a natural empath. If someone comes to me with emotion, I'm feeling it. Um, and and I think most of us are, honestly. That's, that's another thing to realize. But I was able to quickly check in with myself, uh, with my state of mind. I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect at it. I still have my little <laughs> micro explosions sometimes. You never will so be part of being human. <laughs> It's cool. You recognize it. <laughs> I do. I see it and I see myself doing it. And then we're like, okay, there it is. There's the trigger. There's the thing. But but just bringing in that, you know, is it important and urgent? Because most things are not. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> remembering to bring in a little bit of the calm. Um, and when I started doing that, one of uh one of my colleagues, he's, he's a teacher at the school. Um, he, he came to me and just sat down and said, Becca, I'm really amazed at what you do. I don't work with him very closely, I'm, but I do support him and he's seen me in action, I suppose. I really, really am amazed at what you do. Would you talk with my wife? She's, she's a graphic designer. She's just not confident in being in that world. Um, and being a female, it really bothers her a lot. And it was just such a beautiful and honorable conversation. Um, and it really, it, it helped me remember that, yeah, even though I am not aware that eyes are on me, the eyes are definitely on me. So that's something that I can start to be proud of instead of um, try to hide from. And yeah. It was very nice to go through that. That's cool. So, 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 what is it? So, what is it about the community that makes it different? What, what is it that just going back to that? Because it's, it's, it's had a real impact on you, and it's had an impact on the way you're showing up. But, what, what makes it different? This community compared to other things that you've been part of in the past. Yes. Um. So, so the difference is really in having this group that I don't have to explain myself to. I, I literally just show up and everybody has already, everybody already gets it. We, we've already been through it. We don't even have to talk about it. Um, we just start from where we're at and stay with each other. And the value of that is, is in things like, I remember one of the group conversations <laughs> two of us had literally the exact same difficult situation going on at work with a difficult personality type and it was as if we weren't on the other side of the world from each other it was literally as if we were in the same room experiencing the same thing from the same human individual that that we were both trying to cope with and just realizing that that's how things work um and that knowing that someone else out there is literally going through the exact same thing speeds up the healing process so much more. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't feel alone whatsoever in going through any of the, the, the modules or e even in the talks there were maybe two times where I felt like I'm not ready to share. But it was more because I didn't know how much backstory I would have to tell. Mm -hmm. and, and it was it was still a positive thing because it helps me exercise that you know it's when you get your chance to share you have to also consider the people who you're sharing with those who you might be influencing and that's something again that um coaching programs um i can't really say for coaches because i you're my first and i i would say for trainers Trainers are used to running big groups through the same exact experience so that you get that name brand experience. Um, and it's always going to be that. This is different. This is a true mentorship. Each one of us is a mentor in our own right. And each one of us needs mentoring in our own right. And, um, and it works because we honor that in each other. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to what we were talking about at the beginning and, and 
being part of looking for a community looking for a community where and not fitting in so is there any any advice you would give to anyone who feels like they need to be different in order to fit in as you for anybody who's looking to understand themselves and to understand their their influence within a team especially find your real tribe that's my my best advice i suppose and i'm not really big on giving advice like I, i get very nervous about influencing others but when you find the people who truly know who you are who you can literally feel completely comfortable letting your guard down and working on yourself in front of them that's something you hold on to that's something that will help you choose the best that you can be um you won't have to try it will just be you um you won't have to <laughs> you won't have to put the mask on every day or you know cover yourself um that's something that we all want to get to and and i guess finding just for a moment each day or each just a place where you can just uncover and be complete yourself takes that pressure off for a bit doesn't it so it doesn't have to be all the time that's what i'm hearing you say it's just finding a place where you can be you at least yeah the, and then seeing what emerges from there that's right that's right and, and it, it sometimes it is just you working within yourself but it's realizing that in order to do the 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 good work with yourself you have to be yourself you yeah. have to recognize um you know who you really are and it's it's not easy for for some of us who may be in that role of changing who we are to fit in mm-hmm. um gosh i mean you you get so used to it that you you forget you're doing it <laughs> yeah so just so, recognize you're doing it in the first place yeah <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I remember the first couple of calls. I I'm sure I had my business shirt on and, you know, because I I didn't know who I was going to meet. And and very quickly it was like, no, nah, these, these these are my people. They 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 get it and I don't have to explain. Um so I would I would just be myself and um yeah, it felt really good. <laughs> so, final question. We're kicking off again soon. Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking forward to in the next round? The Just... new group. I can't wait. Yeah. This yeah. is really exciting. I mean, it's um it's I was nervous when I first started the the program because I I had never done something so open before and um, but I I had craved it. So I was really looking forward to that. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully <laughs> we'll have 12 new people joining us at the end of February. Amazing. That would be amazing. So, so if anyone is watching this and is interested in joining the Authentic Tech Leaders Mentorship Program, then um, please do get in touch with me and you will be able to meet Becca <laughs> online. We're not on in person at the moment, but maybe yeah. we'll have a group trip out to Cambodia at some point. <laughs> yeah, and, me and, yeah and and all the other amazing people that are part of it so there's there's seven people in the on the program that have done it the first round all clicked as you said and yeah. and I'm just I, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing you people coming in and kind of that the connection building the community building the the kind of people getting to know each other and building it so that there is a place where you feel you can drop in at any time and just yeah. and know that there's a diverse set of people there who are also they're just being open and authentic and there to support so yeah that's that's my dream <laughs> you you're doing a beautiful thing and i know that everybody that's going to jump in is going to feel that too so it, it's not even a question mark it's it's a i can't wait for this to get bigger yeah. because the more that we can add to it the more we are going to find specific groups within yeah. that we can then you know huddle together and support each other on different different aspects of the yeah. program and, and just and life in general it, it can only be more positive so thank you thank you very much becca thank you for coming in and sharing your story and your experiences and and all of that it's just uh, yeah it's so amazing and uh, yeah